Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining us. It's great to see you all here um, online, of course. Uh, my name is John Whitaker. I manage the academic summer school programme at SOAS. Um, and I've also got my colleague Ruha here. Ruha, are you there? Hello everyone, I'm Ruha and I work on the academic summer school alongside John. Great, so hopefully you can hear us both loud and clear. Um, and so today we're just going to take you through our uh, online summer school and, and the way our courses will uh, be structured, the way they're taught um, and kind of the experience you're going to get. It's as close as we can get it to our on-campus program that I know many of you, um, if not all of you, are, had your hopes on, on joining us in London uh, this summer. Um, obviously that's not possible this year, um, but we're going to be bringing you um, something almost as good um, online um, and something that we think you'll find uh, really valuable um, and a great way to spend two weeks uh, of your time with us this summer as well. Uh, so we we did a webinar session, um, a similar session like this, I think back in March uh, before we went online and when we were still planning to, to run the, the on-campus program. Uh, and in that webinar, we gave you a background to SOAS, a big introduction to the summer school as a whole um, and SOAS as an institution. So I'm not going to run through those details again. Um, hopefully, hopefully all of you um, either are familiar with SOAS already uh, and, and have an interest in what SOAS does. Um, but if you're not so familiar, uh, we can link you to the previous uh, webinar, which has, has details about the approaches that SOAS takes to teaching, the specialisms we uh, focus on uh, and uh, and the way we kind of view the world as well. Um, so I won't focus on that too much. Right uh, for this session, I want to get right into uh, the specifics of our online courses, which I think is why you're all here to find out a bit more exactly about uh, how the teaching will work and and what you're going to be doing um, throughout the two weeks of teaching online uh, with us. So let me just make sure I'm not missing. Oh, yeah, so we'll we'll talk for, I think, I don't know, about 20 minutes, um, if that, uh, to give you an overview. Um, and then we'll open it up for your questions. If you've got any questions along the way, put them in the chat and we'll we'll address those as we go as well. So uh, and then we'll we'll kind of formally open it up properly uh, at the end for uh, for any questions. And if we maybe if we miss any along the way, we can we can go back and have a look through. Uh, so I think with that we'll we'll kick off. Um, so I'll take the first few slides, and then Ruha will uh, will be taking you through the, the the second half. So I think this should work. So uh, we have a program of I think eighteen courses that we're offering at the moment um, online. All of the courses will follow the same kind of format and the same structure. Um, there may be very slight differences uh, between some of them. Uh, on the whole, all courses will be the same. Uh, it looks like someone's raising their hand. I'd say maybe if you write your questions in the chat, if you can for now. Um, and then at the end, when we have a Q&A session, we can, we can raise hands and we can speak and chat uh, at the end, perhaps. That might be the best way to do it. Um, but do put any questions in the chat. So. All of our courses uh, are delivered via the virtual learning environment, which I think every university probably has, um, and every university is probably using a lot more in the last few months and, and probably in the next year or so as well, to be honest. Um, so it might be called Moodle, uh, SOAS, it's, it's called Bloomsbury Learning Environment. So that's where uh, you will find all of your course material, that's where you'll access your lectures. Uh, that's where you'll discuss topics with your fellow students and with teachers. That's where you'll do all. Uh, that's where you'll submit all of your assignments and things like that. And basically, all communication and the whole course is delivered via that platform. So you'll have access to that um, before the course starts, so you can familiarise yourself with it. Um, and and that's the that's where all the course will take place. Uh, and you know it's and as you say it, 
there's a range of different activities that you'll be doing throughout the course from discussions to lectures to tutorials to accessing the readings for the course uh, so that's all included within this platform um, so you won't be kind of going off on to other websites and things you'll all be it'll it's all self-contained within this one uh, environment basically um, courses are two weeks duration of teaching um, and approximately we would we would say that you will spend around four to six hours each day uh, covering the material now it is quite intense um, in that respect um, I know a lot of uh, online courses uh, can be very flexible you can dip in and out whenever you have time um, these are very different so so these summer school courses are intended for students to get a real intensive deep dive into a subject but also to earn credit over the summer um, that can be used and put towards your degrees back home as well so there is a fair kind of uh, there's a kind of rigorous element to these courses um, and uh, there are I would say there's a certain amount of kind of study hours that need to be fulfilled because they are credit bearing so courses have been designed uh, kind of with that in mind so yes they are very intensive and there's uh, a lot to pack into two weeks of, of study which is why our days are quite uh, quite full on but I think give you enough time as well to fit it into your day um, and hopefully at the moment with with what's going on you probably have a bit more time on your hands than you usually would so we're kind of counting on you um kind of uh, using this course as as something to really fill your days with as well and and really get something out of it um so yes it's gonna it's gonna mean that you dedicate two weeks really to jumping right into this course as you would have done if you were to visit us in london and study on campus you know your time is you're immersed in the course and you're spending you know much of your day uh, learning something and, and contributing to the course as well um, we advise this around four to six hours you know some course some students will um, still dip in and out so we'll we'll go into the structure of each day a bit more in the following slide I think but it depends on how you are as a student some some of you might want to just uh, post every now and again and discuss things on and off with students some will be very engaged and, and you might spend all night talking to someone about a topic if you wanted to but um so it does depend on on how you are as an individual as well um you can manage the time yourself but i think when you when we see the kind of schedule of a day um i think minimum of around three to four hours you want to dedicate each day uh, to the course to really get something from it and so I mean, on that and the kind of time commitment that these courses would take, we'd, we'd really like to hear your thoughts on that as well and to see, do you think that is manageable for you to do? Do you have any thoughts around that? So do, again, post that in the chat or, or uh, when we come to questions later, do let us know. I'd, I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts around uh, that kind of time commitment over two weeks. Um, so there is two weeks of teaching and then uh, you'll have a range of kind of assessed elements within those two weeks but at the end of the course those of you who want to earn credit will complete a final essay or a final assignment it might be a kind of policy brief that you might uh, produce and you'll be given a week at the end of the course then to complete that assignment so you get a week after the two weeks to complete your final assignment so in a nutshell that is the the kind of overview of, of how to, how uh, courses will be will be taught so i'm going to move along so this is our how a day would look basically so the main lectures will be recorded so they're not live the main the lectures you'll will be recorded beforehand and you can access those at your uh, your convenience so you can we've we've scheduled them in here because it would be this is what we'd recommend you to do but essentially you could watch them when when you like um, they'll be recorded so you'll have a video introduction and a summary at the beginning and the end of each day it might be an hour it might be an hour 
I think we'll keep it to around half an hour because I think things need to be kind of short and sweet uh, when we're doing things online. You don't want to spend over an hour uh, watching someone talk, uh, as you'll probably be aware as I continue talking uh, as we go along. Um, so introduction to each topic first, then you'll be given a set of readings. Readings don't have to just be uh, text. It might be a podcast. It might be a video. Um, so that can be anything related to the topic. Uh, you'll have an amount of time there to, to get familiar with that article or, or to listen to the podcast, to, to, to do what is being asked of you in that slot before we then have a break for lunch and, and then get into the, the live element of the course, uh, which would be our tutorial. So we wanted to still include a kind of a face to face part of the courses. We didn't want it to just be like a lot of these online courses where you just enroll, you get a bunch of material and you work your way through it at your own pace and that's it. You don't really meet anyone else particularly. Um, so this is a way for us to really give you that chance to engage with our academic community and with the course teachers, uh, but also with uh, your peers and, and the students on the course as well. So we really want to create a really the same kind of community feel that we get on campus with our programs uh, to these online courses so that you really feel part of something you're kind of studying together and you're moving through the courses together. Um, but it's also a chance for you to really just direct your questions at the, the academics that we have and speak to them one on one. Um, and yeah, so we, we still feel that that element is quite valuable to these courses. Um, we have scheduled it at, to start at around one o'clock because that seems to be uh, the best compromise in terms of time, uh, time zones across the world. So that's why it's, it's there. Um, Again, the tutorial sessions will be recorded as well. So if it's just impossible for you to log in at that time, you can still go back and, and hear what was said and then uh, still uh, get everything that was, was kind of talked about there. So you're not missing anything, even if you can't, even if time zones become an issue, um, it, it'll be recorded for you. Uh, so as we move down then, uh, following that tutorial session, there'll be a chance for everyone to discuss things within uh, the forum. So it's like a chat forum uh, where all students can post. The teachers will respond to your posts. They'll direct. Uh, they'll kind of direct you on certain topics. Uh, you'll be giving each other feedback. You'll be hearing each other's thoughts. You'll be responding to each other. Um, so it's a real, that's the discussion forums within the virtual learning environment are, are the place where this community gets built. Um, everyone shares their views. If you're not so comfortable kind of talking uh, live in the tutorial, you might have uh, internet issues or something like that that might stop you from doing that. You can still take part in the whole dis course discussion on the forum within that forum. So that's a really important part of the course. Um, Following that kind of allotted time for discussion, although the forum discussions will be open throughout the whole course, there's not a set time that you would go in and out of that. You can do that at your own convenience. But just to give the days a bit of a structure, um, you'll then have a follow up kind of reading uh, or it could be anything. It might even be a guest lecture. Um, it might be something else uh, to do with the discussions that you've had that day. Um, and then following that, there'll be a summary for the day. Um, again, a recorded video by the course convener or the course teachers. Um, and then following that, the as I said, the discussion forum just remains open uh, 24 hours. And you can dip in and out, have a look at what people are saying and, and respond to people kind of as, as you wish then. Some days will be slightly different when there's uh, assessed elements included. Uh, we'll, we'll kind of come on to the assessments, I think, in, in, in a little bit. But uh, that's the general look of a day. Um, and I'm seeing some questions here. Will group work be expected outside of tutorials? Uh, possibly on some courses. It probably differs between courses. Um, you might be expected to, to split into groups to work on something. Yeah, that's quite possible. 
um, and can be done easily within uh, the virtual learning environment that we have. So you can split up into groups and discuss things. Uh, you can have group video sessions as well. Uh, so yes, India, quite possibly. Uh, hello, are you going to tell us about the readings that we have to do before the course starts? So each course will, most courses give you a selection of readings to start before. Not all of them, but, but most will um, have a few readings or just suggest a bit of reading that you can do before the courses start. Um, I think particularly for online courses or for our online courses, because they're so intensive, um, it's quite a good thing to be able to get stuck in uh, before the courses start. Um, so yes, no, there, there will be readings. I can't say exactly which, uh, you know, what they will be. They're obviously going to differ. Um, but uh, I would say at some point in June, um, we'll start to send out preparatory materials to all students uh, to start to to familiarize, familiarize yourself with with uh, course materials and there'll be a few readings there uh, to get started with definitely uh, okay moving on let's see so the assessment side of things so for those of you who are studying for credit not all of you have to study for credit um, we encourage you to kind of do that and to complete all of the assessed parts of the course because they form a large part of the course but um, uh, you don't have to kind of submit the final the final essay I think we'll, we'll talk more about that uh, in a little bit but if you are studying for credit there'll be uh, two assessed elements as part of the course as part of the two weeks so in the first week there'll be one which is worth 10 percent uh, and that's usually a kind of uh, an article review so you might be given an article that you're that you're uh, that you need to critique and then post a response in the discussion forum and then there'll be certain uh, activities associated with that for you to complete basically uh, then as you move through the course in the second week there'll be another assessed element um, which will normally be putting together and constructing an essay plan which you'll then get feedback on from both the teacher and from uh, students as well about thoughts on where you could take it, what you might change. Um, that will be 20%. Um, and again, those two can differ with courses. They might be slightly different approaches taken, but that will be generally what courses will, will do and how you'll be assessed. Um, and then as you get to the end of the course, and, and as we've kind of discussed, uh, you'll be required to submit a final essay uh, or policy brief uh, of around 2,000 to 2,500 words, and that will uh, that will be 70% then of your total mark. Uh, so activities, we call them activities. These are the assessed elements of the course. Um, they could be anything. They could be an article review. It could be a quiz. It could be a blog post, an essay plan, as we've talked about. Um, it could be a number of different things. Just got a question from Hannah. The degree was not in social sciences. Do you think the summer school will be too advanced? Uh, no, not at all. No, you don't need to have a background in these these subjects. Um, which, if you've got a course in mind, let let us know. Um, we can certainly advise you on it, and we can also put you in touch with uh, course conveners who can talk through it with you and make sure that it is kind of the right course for you. But they're certainly not kind of too advanced if you haven't studied that subject before. Um, some of the material isn't kind of very it's not kind of total beginner level stuff but no hannah i think that even though you haven't got a background or your degree wasn't in social sciences that's no reason to uh, to not take one of these courses you'll still get um you'll still be able to keep up and, and and get everything out of it that you want to so i would say let us know which course you want to do and we can put you in touch with the convener if you've still got questions um and i'm sure they'll uh, they will uh, be able to reassure you that uh, the course is, is definitely uh, right for you. So let us know. Uh, moving on, students who complete the assessments. Oh, yeah, so um, obviously anyone completing these assessments and you have to complete all three of these assessed parts. Uh, anyone completing those successfully will then be awarded um, 15 SOAS credits per course and you'll get a transcript confirming those credits. Um, that can be used then 
if you're planning to take or transfer credit back to your home institutions um, uh, and if they need anything else, if they need uh, to review the course at all, to um, to assess it or uh, trying to think of the words, not agree, but just um, make sure that uh, they approve it, basically, um, then let us know if there's anything that they need. We can usually either talk with them directly or provide any information that they, they need. Uh, I think that pretty much covers assessments. Let's have a look what's next. So let's just see if there's a nurse for the climate crisis and politics. Yeah, so yeah, both of those courses uh, are actually taught by the same convener, which is quite uh, convenient, Hannah. Um, Faisy, she's, she's amazing, you'll love her. Um, and yeah, neither of those courses require you to have uh, kind of previous experience. Um, you'll be absolutely fine on those two. And conveniently, something we'll move on to, um, you can now take those courses back to back, whereas uh, they were scheduled to run at the same time. Uh, so, you'd, so you would have had to choose one. I guess that's something to say as well, is that because our courses are full time courses, you do have to select one per session. So if you're thinking of taking two, you'd have to take select one course and then second for a following two weeks so you study for a total of four weeks if you're taking two. Uh, Hannah if you want to get in touch with us we can put you in touch with Faisy the convener and she can talk to you a bit more but um, if you've got any other questions let us know. So I'll hand over to Ruha I've taken up more than enough time here um, and she'll talk you through the next few slides. Uh, so Ruha I'll hand over to you. Cool. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about time zones. I know we've covered a bit of this already um, but obviously we're conscious of the fact that we have students joining us from all around the world and we've really designed our summer school around making sure that we can accommodate as many of you as possible. So when we looked at the schedule we would have seen that the lectures were scheduled for an introductory morning session and for the summer at the end. Although we've recommended that they will be um, recorded and you can access them at any time so there is some flexibility there. Um, you will have also noticed that the discussion forums are open for posts at all times. So again, although there is an allocated slot, you are able to engage in them whenever really suits you. So there's some flexibility and management of your time that you can do yourself. Um, and then John mentioned earlier as well, but the live sessions that you have, which are the tutorials, um, although we've scheduled them for between 1 to 3 p.m., they will be recorded for anybody unable to attend. Um, of course, we do want to include that kind of more interactive, engaging element as well. So we've picked this time because it accommodates the most um, kind of it accommodates the time zones as we could work with. So I think it works out to about 8 a.m. in the US and 9 p.m. in Japan. Um, but again, if you can't attend any of those, they will be recorded and you can access any of this at any time. Um, so, yeah, unless I've got anything else to add, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Yeah, yes. Um... The tutorial, I think most of the tutorials will last for an hour and then the two till three slot would be to the follow up forum discussions within that, isn't it, Ruha, to kind of to do any follow up discussions that have come out of that tutorial that they'll then be taken to the to the forum. So they won't be two hour tutorial sessions, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe they will. If you're having such a good time, they might run over. Who knows? Cool. Sorry, Ruha. No, no worries. Let's move on to the next slide. So we also touched on credit a little bit. So as you might already know, our courses are um, worth 15 SOAS credits each. Um, in the European system, this is equivalent to 7.5 credits. And in the US, this is four. Um, these credits will be awarded to students who complete all of the assessments. So that's the activities that kind of take place within the two weeks of teaching, as well as that slightly larger assessment that takes place in the week after. If you complete all of your course assessments, you'll receive a transcript that confirms your mark, confirms your credits, and um, that will be sent to you. Um, of course, if you don't want to complete your course assessments and you're not too fussed about credit, that's absolutely fine. Um, we would encourage you to still take part in the activities because they do play a strong role in the group discussions that will take place in the forums. So we encourage that, but at the same time, you don't have to complete your final assessment that takes place after if you're not too fussed about the credit. Um, the transfer of the credit will be at the discretion of your home institution. So please, if that is something that's important to you, 
just double check with your home institution beforehand before applying and if there's any way we can support you in doing that by getting in touch with them um, or sending them some further information please let us know and we can do that for you and oh, I also forgot to mention that if you don't complete your course assessments and you don't want the credit you still will receive a certificate that just confirms your attendance of the course Move on to the next slide. Um, so because we've switched to online teaching and the nature of online teaching means that we've had to make a few changes, um, there have been some changes to course dates. So um, we have some courses that share conveners. So for climate crisis, um, as John mentioned earlier, it shares the same convener as um, the politics of protest development and social change. So we have moved climate crisis very recently from session one to session two. So it's now going to take place from the 20th of July to the 31st of July, um, which means that you can take part in both courses if you if you want to. Um, and then secondly, we've also had some changes to the project program and policy evaluation course, which has also moved from session one to session two. Um, at this moment in time, these are the only changes that have taken place. Um, but I would really recommend just double checking on our website before applying We've got a table on the website which specifies which courses take place in which sessions, just to make sure you're not um, applying for courses in the same session um, and that you're okay with the dates that are prescribed for each course. Um, as well as that, I'd probably recommend signing up to our mailing list, which you can do through our website. Um, I can send the link in the chat later, because um, if you sign up to the mailing list, we can update you on any further changes that take place. Um, I think that's everything. Brief. Kind of situation at the moment, isn't it, Ruha? So the website's kind of constantly being updated with uh, new information um, or slight changes because, yeah, at the moment it's just the nature of of the climate that we're in at the moment. It's, you're never really sure what's going to happen week to week, so things can change. Um, so definitely keep checking the website if you're if you're thinking of applying or if you haven't applied yet or if you have applied. Um, just check in every now and again, but really look out for our emails as long as you're signed up to the list uh, the mailing list we'll we'll let you all know of any any major changes that take place but hopefully there won't be many or many more um but yeah it's uh it's just at the moment there uh, yeah there's things kind of are moving very quickly um we've had to move quickly and so yeah there's there's lots of updating going on uh on the website so keep an eye on it um yeah Sorry. No cool. And I think that's everything. So does anyone have any more questions they want to ask? Um, feel free to drop them in the chat at chat if you have any questions. Mm. Have you got one? I'm wondering whether the workshops will take place. Yeah, it's something I just thought then we haven't included the guest lectures and workshops here. So we've got that's one of the things that we're developing uh, or we've had to kind of redevelop since we've moved to online uh, Teresa and we're just for final details before we send everyone um, so I know quite a lot of people have signed up for them already um, particularly when they were on campus um, so they're still running uh, we will announce details uh, very soon on the final kind of guest lecture and workshop series so anyone who's not familiar with this um, it's basically an add-on that you can add to your program um, that focuses on media skills, uh, kind of political training, uh, communication skills, uh, and that kind of thing that uh, SOAS is kind of a big part of uh, the things that we teach and, uh, and part of, of what we study here is, is uh, being able to com communicate and put your points across and, and maybe manage kind of power differentials within the room, how you can use your voice effectively. Um, it's kind of tied into all of our degree programs. So we wanted to give a taste of that uh, as part of the summer school as well. So it's a really exciting uh, addition that you can add to your program. Um, and it'll form, it'll be in the form of a few uh, guest lectures that you can access at any time. So when you sign up, you can just watch them at any time and they'll be about kind of speech writing, uh, how to use your voice effectively, things along that uh, kind of line. There's details on the website. Um, and then 
there'll be a number of workshops that you can actually sign up for. Uh, well, you'll be signed up when you when you add these to your program, but a number of workshops that you can kind of actively participate in then. It might be a kind of CV rewriting workshop. It might be uh, a scenario kind of uh, session where you're uh, you're working in a newsroom and you have to present an article uh, at the last minute. Uh, you have to present a story or something that ch has changed in. Uh, it's like a breaking news story. Um, so there's some really exciting things that they're still going to be doing. Uh, we're still doing. Uh, so I'm just going to scroll back on the chat. So that's something that when you apply, you can add to your program. And we will also, Teresa will uh, send out final information very soon on exactly what those guest lectures and workshops will be and what it'll look like for online. We've just had to make a few changes uh, to that. Uh, so let's see what else we've got. Hello, I am. Not sure what that is in relation to, uh, but that's good. <laughs> Could you please share the link from the original webinar? Yes, we will. Um, I'll buy that now. Is it? Yeah, great. Thanks, Ruga. Uh, of course, is there a cap on the number of students? No, no cap, particularly with online. It makes it uh, kind of a bit more easy. We're not worried about kind of room capacity and things like that online. So there's no cap, Melissa. Uh, carry on. Possibly send us a link to you. Yeah, we'll put the oh, the dates not entirely fixed for the courses. Could you go over the next sessions? Uh, they are fixed, India. So the two session dates are our fixed dates. They won't be running outside of those dates. We've had to move those two courses because they 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 shared uh, the same convener that as I was saying. But that's pretty much it now. So so courses shouldn't be moving uh, between sessions again. Uh, the ones uh, other than the two we've mentioned, they should stay as they are. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see what else we've got. I'm interested in some schools, non credit, but I don't have any English. Only has to go to the game. Yeah, Yukari, um, if you can drop us an email, uh, we, can, we can discuss that with you. There's other options if you don't have certification of your English language level, particularly at the moment because test centers are closed. Um, yeah, it's obviously very difficult. So either just drop, send us your application. We've we've removed the requirement of, of English language documentation to be added to applications. So you can apply now without having to submit that. Um, and then we'll discuss it with you. Um, or you can just drop us an email. Ruha, maybe if you could put our summer school email in there for anyone who hasn't got it in the chat, that would be great. So Yukari, that's fine. Just let us know and we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. Uh, Laria, iPad keyboard. Oh. <laughs> uh, so the application deadline is the 29th of May. Probably should have added that in here as well. It's quite an important thing. Uh, so 29th of May, you've got to sign up. Uh, please get your applications in. Let's have a look. Considering doing a master's in a different subject after I finish my degree next year. Would you recommend taking part in the summer school? Would be a good way to get. Yeah, Anum, that's exactly what these kind of summer school courses are designed to do. Um, whether you're thinking of uh, coming to SOAS for your masters or not, um, it's a great way to discover a new subject that you might be thinking of. Um, particularly if you do want to try something at SOAS, then it gives you a feel for the way we teach at SOAS and how we approach things. Um, yeah, it, on some courses, even some of the material is kind of taken from master's programs um, for certain courses. Um, so it's definitely a bridge between uh, undergraduate study and master's study, definitely. OK, Lucas, will you adapt the price this year? Yeah, we so we've reduced the fee. Uh, that's something, again, that we haven't included here. Uh, We've reduced the fee from our on-campus program. So the on-campus fee was about 1750 and uh, it's now 1200 so 1200 We've offered various discounts. So there was early bird discounts uh, with that. There's a discount if you want to study two courses. We're also offering a discount um, 
on next year's on-campus program. So if you study with us online this year, you'll receive and you want to come back and study with us on campus next year, we're, we're offering 50% off your tuition fee next year if you study with us online this year. Um, so I think that's a really quite a good incentive. It, it actually means that with the, with the reduction in fees this year and the 50% discount, you're almost getting two for one uh, if you do want to, to come back next year. Um, so I think it's quite a good offer, to be honest. So yes, Lucas, we, we have reduced it. And then this is what I'm taking class. Yeah, that's great. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Cool. Any other questions at all? I know someone raised their hand earlier. I don't know if we've, it might have been you, Anna, actually. So I think we've, yeah, we've hopefully answered your question. Anything we might have forgotten, Ruha? So we've talked about discounts. Are there any discounts I missed? We've got, yeah, the 10% off if you apply for more than one course, um, partner institutions. So, um, yeah, there's a list, right? Yeah, I can send that in the chat as well, actually. There's a number of institutions that we have partnership agreements with uh, that we list. And if you're from any of those institutions, uh, there's further discounts that you can access as well. Um, I think it's up to 20%. Uh, so it's worth having a check as well before you apply. But we would, if we see that you're from those institutions, we'd just apply the discount anyway. So where are we? 22, someone's just joined the session. Uh, I'm hoping we've recorded this. Yes, we're recording it. So um, anyone who's just joining, this will be available online to catch up with. Any other questions or have we covered most things? So people think of time then that we discussed. Um, do you all feel like that's manageable? And then we'll get to some of these final questions as well. Any thoughts on how much time you'll be time sound good? Great India. Great, Hannah. Okay, good. I mean, great. Thank you all. That's good to know. Um, I mean, we've, we've all got to spend our days, fill out something at the moment, right? For the general, uh, great. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, so, what was the 29th of May payment deadline? So, once you apply, we give you 10 days which to make your payment if you for any reason you need a bit more time then let us know um we can usually be accommodating um, but the further and closer it gets to courses starting um the tighter that becomes so um certainly not the same day we'll, we'll give you 10 days to make you to arrange and make your payment and we'll give you instructions on how to do that uh, melissa Credits can be carried over if we're studying to master September, was it to add to this finishing? So credits earned on these courses can't be carried on to a master's program at SOAS. They're not at the right level. Um, so Hannah, are you currently studying at SOAS at the moment? They're undergraduate level credits, so they're really intended for uh, students who are studying elsewhere to study and then take them back uh, to their home institution. But also, uh, now I'm finishing up at Kingston. Yeah, so unless they say, unless Kingston say for any reason you can use these credits to your undergraduate degree, um, then great. But if not, then yeah, unfortunately, they're not at the right level for master's programs. Um, there's one of course, understanding research method, where it's possible that you could get master level credit, but uh, we have to discuss that with you in more detail. The credits at level five, India, level five, second year undergrad. Great, thanks, Hannah. Okay, let's just go back and catch up. Yeah, you can contact the 
professors directly, they'll be happy to uh, get back to you. Um, sometimes they're very busy, so it might take uh, a while. I would say it may be something that we can answer in the first instance. So I'd contact the summer school address, uh, nay, summer school at soas.ac.uk. And then if we need to, we can put you in touch with the professor from there. But if you want to contact them directly, that's not a problem. Uh, anything unfunded? So we we offered six scholars full tuition fee scholarships earlier in the year. Uh, so you've got to be kind of quick and early to, to catch those. They've all been awarded now. Um, so there's not really any funding opportunities that we can offer. Uh, we've tried to reduce the price as much as we can. Um, and offered as many kind of discounts to that as we could as well. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, kind of all that we offer at the moment. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's kind of it. So the scholarships are really the main way of of getting funding for for these uh, kind of through SOAS. Um, unless there's any kind of external funding, but then it's, there isn't usually that much external funding for summer school courses, although. Possibly because they're credit bearing, you might find someone offering something, but um, we're not really aware of that many out there, unfortunately. So we could probably mention for our Understanding Africa course, we do have a separate um, bursary available. So if you go onto the course page for Understanding Africa, you can apply for that. That is just for that one course. Very true. Thank you, Ruha. And it just cut out there. So that's Understanding Africa um, are offering, is it three bursaries, Ruha? Uh, I think, yeah, so three bursaries of about £500 each. Yeah, so you could, if you're interested in that specific, specific course, then there is funding available there, actually. Um, thanks, Ruha. Any final questions? OK, well, this has been great. Thank you so much for for joining us um we really appreciate it and we're looking forward to receiving all of your applications so anyone who's applied already will know ruha very well um she looks after you from start to finish and those of you who uh, are yet to apply will be hearing from us uh very soon so thank you all take and we look forward to uh coming to you this summer and giving you a real kind of SOAS experience. Even though it's online, we're still offering you the kind of best that SOAS offers. You're going to have access to our academic expertise that is so kind of specialist and not really available anywhere else. Um, yeah, it's something that is going to be very exciting and you're going to really enjoy. OK, guys, thanks very much. And Thank you. We'll see you. Thanks all. Bye bye.